In this video, we're defining density and we're doing some unit conversions with it. Then we look at specific gravity and do an example with that. And then finally, we look at a density calculation where we get the mass from the density. So let's just start with the definition. So I can say density is mass per unit volume. And in symbols, it looks like this. You would take the mass and divide by the volume in order to get the density of a substance. And the units of that, the SI units, would be kilograms per cubic meter. So let's check out an example of a density calculation. In this example, we're told that lead has a density of 11.34 grams per cubic centimeter. So you may be used to this in chemistry classes, for example. All the densities are given in these units, but these are not the SI units that we would use in a physics course. So we want to convert to kilograms per cubic meter. There's a real key point about the conversion here, and that's that the conversion between cubic centimeters and cubic meters is really tricky. So let's bring in a cubic meter and just examine it. All right, there's our cubic meter, and by far the most common mistake with this conversion is for students to say that 100 cubic centimeters is one cubic meter. But there's a dimensionality issue there. Let's get the volume of this thing by multiplying length times width times height, and I get 100 centimeters times another 100 centimeters times another 100 centimeters. And of course, I get units of centimeters cubed out of that. And 100 times 100 times 100, that's 10 to the 6 or a million. So a cubic meter actually has a million cubic centimeters in it. So there's one conversion factor that we're going to need. The other one that we need is that one kilogram is 1,000 grams, which usually doesn't cause any problems. And then we'll do our unit analysis problem here. We take 11.34 grams per cubic centimeter, and we multiply by 10 to the 6 cubic centimeters per cubic meter, and we multiply by one kilogram for every 1,000 grams. Cancel units, and one thing you should note here, because you do these conversions frequently in, f in fluid mechanics, is that 10 to the sixth over 10 to the third, or the thousand here, gives me 10 to the third. In other words, this is a factor of a thousand. So when every time we do one of these conversions, you just multiply by a thousand. So in the end, I get 11,340 kilograms per cubic meter. Here's a little follow-up example, and this is done quite frequently when you're studying fluid dynamics and fluid statics, where you have to get the mass of something based on its density and the volume of it. So if I look at the definition of density, that's mass per unit volume. Just multiply both sides by V, and I get that the mass would be density multiplied by volume. You want to practice enough where you just go straight to that. Density times volume is mass. In this example, we want the mass of a lead cube with a side length of 8 centimeters. So let's get the volume real quick. And we can just do this in cubic centimeters. I have 8 centimeters on each side. Length times width times height is going to give me 8 centimeters all cubed. And that comes out to 512 cubic centimeters. And then what's the density of lead? We just covered that. In cubic centimeters, it was 11.34 grams per cubic centimeter. And then I can get my mass. That's the density, 11.34. Oops, my volume, I forgot my exponent. 11.34 times 512 cubic centimeters. The cubic centimeters cancel, and I get grams out of this. So when I do the calculation, I get 5,810 grams, and it's a physics class, so we should convert that back to kilograms, so 5.810, or just 5.81 kilograms. Finally, I want to introduce the concept of specific gravity. And all specific gravity is is just the equivalent way of talking about density. It's the density of a substance or an object divided by the density of water. So it's a ratio of the density of the object to the density of water. So, for example, the specific gravity of water would be 1, because it would be the density of water divided by the density of water. Notice here that specific gravity is unitless. And with a little bit of practice, you can be pretty casual about it. You can say, oh, if something has a specific gravity of 2, that means it's twice as dense as water. Now, one thing that, that you should know when you're messing around with specific gravity is you should know the density of water, and the density of water is about 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Or if I use that factor of a thousand thing from the last slide, that's the same as one gram per cubic centimeter. 
but we'll mostly be using these units of kilograms per cubic meter. So let's do one more example real quick. And there's our example. We want to compute the specific gravity of lead. So all we have to do is take the density of lead. Um, I guess I'll just do this in the SI units. So 11,340. I'll put the little chemical symbol for lead down there. Uh, kilograms per cubic meter. And then we have the density of water. So H2O is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And all I do to get the specific gravity of lead is take its density divided by the density of water. And again, the units completely cancel out here. So we're really just saying how much more dense is this substance than water. And I end up with 11.34 for the specific gravity of lead.